Hey T-Heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. You know, we have many, many scouts and producers all over tea country sending us samples of tea every single year for us to curate the Mayleaf selection. And there's one girl that lives in Fujian who I have come to really trust over the eight or nine years that we have worked together. She has immaculate taste and she sends us teas all the time and generally her teas are very, very good. One type of tea that she doesn't tend to send very often because she's in Fujian is pu'er tea. But she reached out to me a few months ago and said, my friends have been making a pu'er tea in Yunnan, a blend of Iwu villagers and I think you should try this cake because I really, really love it. So obviously I'm not gonna refuse that. I said, send it over. And I bought a cake for my own private collection. It arrived, I tasted it. I was swooning over it. I've had about three or four sessions with it and I absolutely adore it. An amazing, amazing purity, this Iwu blend. And so I thought we have to bring this to the people out there. And so I've purchased a small number of cakes for us to break up for you to all try. This is it. This is the Iwu Seven Village blend made by the friends of this scout of ours, friend of ours in Fujian province. Let's take a look at these leaves and I will quickly scope this tea. It is a beauty. If that doesn't make you, your heart rate go up a little bit as a poor lover, then I don't know what will. This is April 2019, so it has some age on it, as you can see. As I'm speaking to you now, this is over four years old. Cultivar is going to be Daya Jong variety from the mixed genetics of the Iwu area. Origin is Iwu. I will be putting all of the seven villagers names on the screen right now so you can see the villagers themselves. Picking and processing is going to be the classic for raw pu'er and elevation is 1,500 meters. You can see a lot of bud material there that have already started to go beauti beautifully. Antique gold color. The smell is fruity as it is amazingly fruity. It's very rare that I do smell on dry leaf from a cake, but I'm getting lots of peach candy here. Okay, so let's break this up, which will be a very, very easy affair because the compression is great on it. So I originally thought I'm gonna buy this for my private collection. So I was gonna put in an order for about 12 cakes or something, but I thought let's buy some more for you to all try. <clears throat> it's funny because I have a very enduring memory of the last time I really spent time with this woman in Fujian and she said to me, I don't drink much raw pu'er. That's the only tea, tea type that I don't drink much. He, she said, but when I drink it, you know it's because it's gonna be something that just has a particular taste that I love. So whenever she says, oh, there's a poor that I love, I'm always all ears. Okay, let me, let me check out the poor that you love. And wow, this tea really hit the mark. All right, we've got a little <clears throat> tea pet here. And we're gonna get these leaves in. Fabulous looking leaves. So what you want when you see this sort of, the date that's about four years old, you're hoping to see some of this sort of golden colored buds developing. <clears throat> early morning here, I'm getting addicted to early morning sessions. So yes, I know my face looks like it's just woken up, but here we go. Wake up, Don, let's go. 
let's drink this beautiful Seven Village Iwu Smell Dry Leaf. Oh, deliciously fruity in a uh, honey and lemon way. Uh, it reminds me of lozenges, like those cough lozenges that have honey in them. Can't remember the brand name, but there are probably a few. But you know, when you've got a slightly lemony, hard boiled candy with honey inside. So that preserved lemons in honey. Um, orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice. Very fruity, but in the citrus notes. Oh, but there's so much more. Um, but it's hard to get past all of those citrus fruits and honey. There's some woodsy notes here, some cedar wood. Um, oh, more will come. Oh, such a unique smell. It's that honey lemon smell that I really do not recall in a lot of raw puertis. It's got a fresh, bright, zingy quality, but at the same time, smells preserved, aged and honeyed. Smell of wet leaf. Whoa. A nose full of all sorts of madness. And I'm going to say something which is probably not going to appeal to a lot of people, but you know, it's, it's a note that's in the tea and I really love it. It's just the association that you may make with it. But I smell like pine cleaner. Like, like if you, if you mop laminate floors or wooden floors with a pine scented cleaner. So it's got, yeah, pine, but it's so concentrated. Um, some burnt sugar. Let's, yeah, let's say <clears throat> like dark brown sugar. I'm getting um, those fruit rolls, strawberry leathers. So the, those compressed dried fruit. So again, fruity, but preserved dried concentrated, cedar wood, pine, foresty, honeyed, brown sugars. A bomb of a smell. <clears throat> okay. Ooh, what was the temperature there? Uh, it was 91. Okay. All right. It's going to be a bit cooler than I would have wanted my first infusion, but that's okay. We can adapt, better to go too cool than too hot. So if you brew like a green tea too hot, it's very hard to then claw it back because you've extracted a lot from that first infusion. But this way, this will, this will be a more gentle infusion and I'll brew it for five or 10 seconds longer. You can always adapt with brewing. That's the beautiful thing about whole leaf tea brewing is it has flexibility. Despite the fact that a lot of people like to geek out on the intricacies, the flexibility is also part of the joys of Gong Fu Brewing. All right, let's take a look at these leaves. Again, very, very golden and peachy, an extremely peachy color. <clears throat> you can see it's got age on it. It's got a lot of activity going on. Take a look at the liquor. Looks like it's got some thickness to it, but obviously if I'd brewed it a bit hotter then that may have brought out a bit more. Let's see what the texture is. Medium thick right now. I think that if I'd brewed it hotter it would have been thicker, but we'll see. Um, soft, extremely soft, velvety, luxury. Taste. 
getting a bit of that pine and cedar wood. I'm getting orange marmalade. So sweet, citrus, slight bitters, moving back to sweetness. Ooh. Getting some fresh tobacco, fresh rolling tobacco, fresh packet of rolling tobacco, sweet, nutty, woodsy notes to it, slightly vanilla note to it. Um, what else? The pine resin is coming through. Less pine cleaner, but it's more like sweet resinous. Honeys. Again, it's that lovely combination of lemony, citrusy, honeyed, and piney. Which, it, it surprised me. It, it, it's a tea which I've really, a tea taste which I don't really associate with even Iwu. It's really, I mean, maybe the honeyed quality, the sort of nectary, honeyed, sweet, soft quality of it. Yes, that's there. But it's this uh, lemon, preserved lemon, orange marmalade and pine quality that I just find very unique about this tea. Out. <clears throat> All right, that was boiling water. I'm brewing in our new guy one which I don't currently have a name for, but you'll see it on the website, which I love. You know, it takes a lot for us to buy a new guy one. They, they're so simple, right? Lidded bowl, but we taste, we test so many and I'm really sort of fussy about the finish and, and all the rest of it, the, the size. And I love this glaze on this guy one. It's glimmering and shimmering and iridescent. Right, let's taste second infusion of the Seven Village Iwu. The blend of Seven Villages, 2019. Already making my stomach wake up. First sip of the day, it's about 6 a.m. here. <clears throat> oh, thicker, now it's thick. Um, and more of the orange marmalade is coming through. I'm also getting like that peach candy that I was talking about. So hard boiled sweets, peach candy. Touch of vanilla. Oh. The honey is there. But again, like as if it's been mixed with preserved fruits or actually like orange blossom honey. So it's got the flowery quality of oranges as well. So there's a bit of floral, a lot of fruit, a lot of the honeyed and sugared notes, but all deeper resinous and pines and cedar woods. A beautiful, beautiful blend. A beautiful, beautiful blend. The Seven Village Iwu. And I don't know how we're gonna be selling this. I guess we're gonna be breaking these cakes up into big chunks for people to try. They are expensive. So I, I want people to try them and I don't have that many. So it's better for us to break them and let a lot of people sample this tea. Not something we do very often this, but you know, when the tea calls for it, the tea calls for it. The tea is, you know, makes the rules here. It demands things in its soft and unassuming way. All right, brew up another um, batch while, oh, it's so unique, the smell. Again, I'm getting this like sort of Pine, piney quality with wild honey. That's the best way that I can, um, okay, so I'm getting a little bit more melon, so it's a bit sweeter. So cant cantaloupe melon. So cantaloupe melon 
wild, resinous honey that comes from a pine forest. It's so terroir. You can, you can smell the forest and, and, you know, the forest across the spectrum, not just the woods, but you're smelling the resins, you're smelling the pine needles, you're smelling potentially the fruit trees in this forest. And if there's one thing that I find so desirable about raw poetis is its ability to link you through the senses to these ancient forests. And uh, you can, you know, picking up the smell, the aromatics and the character of these old forests is a real, um, a really important part of poor tasting. And maybe an area where people sort of, when you first get into Shang Pua, you might miss that point and you're like, well, it, it I don't know, for some it may say, oh, it's a bit too woody because you're looking for a, a more processed taste, a more developed taste, if you like, developed into, or we've taken that and then we've brought out more of the flowers and more of the, you know, uh, fruits or more of the creaminess through processing. The, the, the joy of Shang Pua is <clears throat> the fact that it is keeping the um, character of the forest through being relatively unrefined in its, refine, in its refinement, if you know what I mean. Right, uh, three infusions in. I'm gonna drink through and I'll let you know body sensation. Bring up the seventh infusion, a very powerful tea, this one. It's got a really bright, forceful energy to it. It's, uh, it's not messing around this tea. This is a get up and go tea. This is a tea that is the perfect tea to start the day. I feel so much more awake than when I started this session. So it's really, really, you know, gonna put some fuel in the tank. <clears throat> it's warm though, it's fuzzy, it's comfortable. It's not um, some sort of rushy, shivery tea, but it's definitely bright focused and quite forceful. Like it, like it a lot. Um, the taste has maintained itself. More of the woods, more of the pine, but then I'm also getting some sweet, now a little bit fresher notes of watermelon as well. Um, or even like, yeah, I was gonna say watermelon candy, but it's more fresh watermelon, but a very, very sweet one and a very, very concentrated uh, watermelon taste. I realize I haven't done finish. Finish is mineral and bright. It is lively. It is um, moving, transforming. It moves to a, like a mandarin zest sweet juiciness, but with plenty of movement, dryness, pull, and a lot of those bright, slightly sort of metallic mineralities that happens with really good pua tea. Yeah, this is a very, very awakening tea. So here we have a fabulous blend um, that was made by the friends of one of our most trusted scouts in Fujian province. As I said, she doesn't drink much poor and she doesn't send us much poor. But when she says she's found a poor that she loves, I always listen. The seven village Iwu poor is up online. That's it, tea heads. Check out other videos, taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com and come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.